My name is Gabriela Huck and I'm professor in the Power Systems Laboratory at ETH Zurich. In my group, we're doing mostly modeling, optimization and control of future electric power grids. Do you think nuclear power will play a significant role in the future energy supply? As scientists, we probably shouldn't exclude any technology to consider for the energy supply system. However, with the Energy Strategy 2050, we have decided that in Switzerland, we want to phase out of nuclear power, meaning that we don't want to build new power plants and only let the ones that are currently on the grid run until they're not safe anymore. However, if a resource is good or bad, depends on a number of factors. And with nuclear power, a lot of it is also about uh, political discussions, such as is it accepted by the population, is it risky to have a nuclear power plant, what are we going to do with the nuclear waste, and on top of that there's also large investments required to build new nuclear power plants. Are there any new physical energy storage solutions researched right now? There are a number of different energy storage solutions. The most traditional one is pumped hydro power plants that we already know for, for decades. Newer ones are batteries, all kinds of batteries with different types of uh, materials, but then also storage devices such as compressed air, where we use energy to compress air and then use it to use that pressure to produce then again uh, electric energy. Flywheel storage is also a potential resource. There are existing flywheel devices that store kinetic energy and then release it again when uh, energy is, is needed. There's also other types of, you could call it storage technologies, such as power to X technologies, where we say we got to use excess electric energy to produce other energy resources, such, such as hydrofuels or other alternative uh, fuels, and then store it and then either use these resources to produce again electric energy or to use it in a different uh, form. So there's lots of research into these different types of energy storage solutions. Should the Swiss government subsidize clean energy for homes? The Swiss government already subsidizes the installation of photovoltaic resources. So if you want to install a photovoltaic plant on your roof, then you get about 30% of the investments cost from the government as a subsidy. And that's how, that has also helped increase the building of such photovoltaic plants because the costs of photovoltaics have been going down over the past years and the subsidies have helped to reduce the overall cost and therefore make it profitable to build uh, photovoltaic resources. But if it's profitable or not also depends on the geographical location because tariffs depend on where people live. So if you have a, a high grid tariff, meaning if you have to pay for, you pay for the energy that you're using, but also for the usage of the grid. So if you can consume some of your own energy, then you're saving that grid tariff. The higher that grid tariff, the faster it's profitable for you to have a photovoltaic um, production on your roof. But also how much you get if you're feeding into the grid, if you don't use the power production from your photovoltaic, has an impact on if it's profitable or not. And then of course, it's not just a matter of, of costs, some people also, of course, want to invest into these photovoltaic resources because uh, they want to contribute to the, uh, to the transition to a renewable energy system. What type of renewable energy has the biggest unused potential in Switzerland? So in terms of renewable resources, there are only certain renewable resources which are even possible in Switzerland. Obviously, hydropower is a large resource, but we've already been using most of that potential, so we can't build so much more. On the other hand, there's uh, photovoltaics, and in the energy strategy, that's uh, a major um, part of the energy strategy because it makes a lot of sense for Switzerland compared to other resources. For example, wind energy is also part of it, but to a much smaller part. Why? Because the topology of Switzerland and also the climate are not very suited for wind energy. Then there's also other resources such as biomass, which are also part of the future energy system, but also we can only have that to a, a certain degree. And then there's geothermal energy resources, which are being investigated to what degree that would make sense for Switzerland. Obviously, wave and tidal power 
uh, don't make much sense for Switzerland. So mostly we're going to see um, photovoltaics as the major contributor in terms of renewable resources. Do we have to decrease our energy use drastically in order to guarantee the future energy supply? A major pillar of the energy strategy is to improve energy efficiency. And one place where this can be done is in buildings, so improving the energy efficiency of buildings. And the plan in the energy strategy is to reduce the energy consumption overall by about 40%. But that's overall energy consumption, so not electricity consumption. In terms of electric energy, one needs to be careful because we want to have a more sustainable overall energy system and thereby electrification is a very important component. What that means is we want to electrify transportation systems, so having more electric vehicles. We want to electrify the heating system, so having more heat pumps. So that will lead to an increase in the electric energy consumption. But it simply means that we're shifting some of the energy consumption that is not electric to electric energy, but overall the electric Electric, or the overall the energy consumption should be uh, reduced. How do you want to make renewable energy sources capable of providing baseload power? So the definition of baseload refers to a resource that is providing electric energy continuously over time and is providing the amount of energy that we always use at any point in time. That definition mostly came from the fact that we had nuclear power that was providing this baseload power. I actually think in the future we probably need to think about these definitions. We need to think about what energy mix are we going to have and less of the baseload power, of the peak power, etc. So in the future we're likely going to have a combination of different uh, resources. Obviously there's a lot of it photovoltaics but also hydropower that is able to balance also the, the intermittency and variability from these renewable resources. Some biomass potentially also have some gas power plants and in combination with also some storage and import and export we believe that we can balance the system and we don't need to think so much about what type of resource we use for what type of, um, of load or covering of, of what type of, of load. Is there enough energy supply for everyone to drive an electric car? Currently no because the electric energy consumption it would take to cover all electric vehicles would be in the range of about 20%. So we would have to increase our overall electric energy production by about 20%, which is a very large step. However, we're planning long-term uh, these systems and also take into account that increase in the electric energy demand, not just by electric vehicles, but also by the heating system. So if we're having a significantly more heat pumps, that ad adds additional need for electric energy. And therefore, we will have to expand our system, but that's also in the plans for the, for the future. And our simulations show that if we take that into account, then economically we will be able to support the demand that's also required from electric vehicles. What has to be said though is that we have seen in our simulations that in 2030, 2040, the increase in electric vehicles would likely lead to an increase in the import of electric energy before then really photovoltaics take off and have a larger increase than what we have now. And in 2050, we'll be able to reduce the import or the needed import to cover also the load that is required from the electric vehicles. Should we worry about blackouts? How likely are they to occur? ELCOM, the regulatory authority, and SwissGrid, the transmission system operator, and a variety of researchers are looking into these questions. So how likely is a blackout in Switzerland? And what they're doing is studying different situations. And the reason why this has become such a prominent question is because the EU has decided to implement a rule that says that 70% of the cross-border capacities between uh, the countries have to be used for trades within the EU. So it's not clear yet how Switzerland will fit into these rules, but it is likely that it will have impacts on how much import and export Switzerland can have in the future. Given that these implementations are expected by 2025, this will already have in the near future some impact. And then on top of that, not having the Stromab common, of course, is also not beneficial. So they're thinking about how can they prevent situations that lead to a blackout in Switzerland. But on the other side, 
the studies also show that it does take a number of unfortunate events that we're going to have blackouts in Switzerland. So overall, the answer to the question is, well, yes, we should worry about blackouts. We should take preventive measures and do studies and figure out under which situations are we going to have a problem. But then also think about what are countermeasures? What can we do in the next years to prevent this? And there are a number of suggestions in these reports that have been coming out about how that can be prevented. So right now, no, we don't have to worry about it, but for the future, yes, we definitely need to study it and then also take measures.